Greetings. Hey, bleach my hair. Well, bleach my roots. I'm not doing the lengths because I need to protect them and cherish them. Um, they're this long. I normally would wait a bit longer, but for whatever reason, my roots are really bothering me right now. So this is what we got, what we're starting with. And I will be back after I'm done sectioning. Okay, I'm back. I just realized that I haven't actually mixed the bleach yet. I just put it into a container. Um, so I have got some sections and I've got my hair, well, not the roots, but the lengths. Dosed in oil, just there's a little bit of a barrier and um, give my hair a little bit of moisture. It needs it. Okay, mixing, mixing. I put the usual Schwarzkopf on me. Um, mix of about half and half, 30 volume and 7 volume to dilute it. <clears throat> Almost through the 30 volume. <coughs> so here goes. Eh. Now, I'm not starting at the bottom because here is quite fragile at the bottom. Just give that, I'm going to do that part last. That's where I've got the most breakage, so let's leave bleach soaking on it for as little time as possible, ideally. I feel like I haven't done this in ages, but it's only been a few weeks. I feel like I feel like this every time I bleach my hair. Dousing it all kind of helps with the sections too. This my hair has got a bit of a flyaway texture. So it kind of goes all over the place when I'm doing something at the root. Should be coating it more. Need more bleach. More, 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 more. Okay, I didn't mention it in my last video because I was preoccupied with panic. Um, the records of wisdom finally came. I got here like four business days after the release date. And I played through with it in like five days because, you know, I don't have a life. <laughs> Somebody at work whose boyfriend was playing it too, and she's like, You're already done? Well, yeah, <laughs> that's all I've done for the last week. Like, go to work and then go home and play Echoes of Wisdom. Get up in the morning, play Echoes of Wisdom, go to work. You know, obviously. Um, so it's a good game. I enjoyed it. A little bit different, fun times. But kind of overshadowing that um, is that I had pre ordered the Final Fantasy, like, I think it's Pixel Remaster combo pack for the Switch, which I might add shipped two days before release date and may have gotten here the day before release. So, you know, way to go Best Buy, fuck you GameStop, because GameStop, you know, you let me down. But Best Buy, you did not let me down. Um, yeah. <laughs> So the second I was done, I go to Wisdom, I'm like, oh my god, Final Fantasy VI. So I haven't played it in a couple of years, and there is something about that game that just absolutely consumes my entire being. Like, I need to be playing it at all times, and then I think about it, and then I dream about it. Like, it's, it's kind of a problem. <laughs> I love that game. So yeah, that came while I was still playing through Echoes of Wisdom, so I did finish that before I started Final Fantasy VI. So yeah, I got that, played through it once, and then I was like, well, now what do I do? I could play it again. So <laughs> I started a second playthrough, and I'm almost finished that. And yeah, I don't know what it is about the game, but like, it just consumes my entire being. I like the other Super Nintendo and Nintendo era Final Fantasies, but there's something about six. Like, it's my everything. The music remaster of the opera scene is pretty awesome, because I only ever played it on the Super Nintendo. Well, 
SNES classic. Um, yeah, the opera scene was amazing with better music. <laughs> and now I've got a choice. And like, I'm that person who has to teach every single person every single spell. Um, yeah. <laughs> it consumes my whole being. Like, it's kind of painful right now that I'm not playing it and that I'm doing my hair. Because, you know, my am so good because I could be playing that instead of coloring my hair right now. I could be. But every time I look in the mirror, I don't like my hair, so I need to do this. <laughs> And then I'll start playing it again. But I'm awfully close to finish my second playthrough. I'm just cruising around on the belt right now, trying to teach Gauss and Rages. And I've got most of the ones I want, but I may need to move on. And then the only other character to recruit is Gogo, but I'd never use him, so I kind of saved that for last. Just once I've got everybody else to, like, power, I'm just, you know, instead of going back and forth grinding, it gives me something to do while grinding. And, like, I'm willing to sit there in the game for hours and just walk back and forth and grind and grind and grind. Most games I'm not willing to do that, but Final Fantasy VI, man. I thought that I would be talking about Zelda more in this video, but here I am talking about, like, <laughs> I don't know, a 30-year-old game? Maybe more? See, after I'm done this, I will probably get back of Wisdom in another playthrough. I feel like I rushed through it so fast that I don't really remember what I did. <laughs> I've been watching videos and people kind of giving their thoughts. I'm like, I don't really remember that part. <laughs> but I didn't quite 100% it. I came pretty close, but I didn't get all of the mind crystals. I couldn't be bothered. Because, of course, I didn't know which ones I didn't have until I was basically done the game, and I was like, well, it's not really worth it at this point. But yeah, I enjoyed it. And I shall play through it again. And then I don't know what I'm going to do, because that will be all of the Zelda games except Zelda 2 that I played through in the last like, year. But I guess I do have Final Fantasy 1 through 5 and my little remaster thing, and it's so nice that I can play them on the Switch. Yes. Luckily, this isn't hurting my shoulder because I hurt my shoulder at work like a month and a half ago. And I finally started going to physio a couple weeks ago, but that's a pain in the ass because it means I have to leave my house and also means that I can't be playing Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> Yeah, and like, ugh, I have to leave my house three times a week for it. I hate leaving my house. Like, normally I leave my house for work, and that's about it. Like, absolutely strictly necessary errands. I've known to go months without getting groceries. I just go to Costco every two months when I'm low on cheese and coffee. And I just kind of get by on takeout for the rest. I don't like cooking, so... <laughs> Why would I go to the grocery store when I could get takeout. I should be better about that, but it's so easy <laughs> when you live in a city. It's just, well, what do I want today? Which one do I want? Greek food? Do I want, like, what do I want? I can have anything. And I don't have to cook it. Yes. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, I have to leave my house three times a week, plus go to work, which sucks. Sucks. Like, today's my first full day not leaving my house in, I think, two weeks. And normally, like, I can do one thing in a day. Like, normally, you know, work is my one thing, and then that's enough. I'm not doing anything for the rest of the day. It is, yes, it is a good thing I'm not a parent, <laughs> because I would not be able to, yeah, do that, but, you know, I go to work, and that's my one thing for the day, but <clears throat> there's days where I have to do two things, and go to physio before work, and I hate it, 
but it is helping, so there's that. Because I've got, well, and like my freaking doctor trying to gaslight me. Like, he's told me twice now that my shoulder ultrasound results were normal. And I'm like, well, I have access to the results and they're not normal. Like, they're not seriously abnormal, but like, there's tendinosis and some mild thickening of the bursa. And like, that's not <laughs> normal. Like, it's no, there's no tears, but that doesn't mean it's a totally normal ultrasound. But yeah, I think doctors, man, especially when you're feeling like my shoulder hurts. And. My ultrasound says that there's an abnormality. Like, why are you trying to tell me that it's normal? More than once. Fuck. My doctor sucks. Can I just say, just put that out there? But it's easy to get an appointment with him. Like, I can get an appointment the same day, usually. Which just kind of shows how much you suck. But, the convenience. <laughs> and my needs at the doctor are usually fairly basic. It's just the odd time that something abnormal comes out of you don't leave. And he's a one finger typer, like <laughs> again. And you know, not everybody learned to type. But, like it would make your life so much easier if you learned to type. Like you got your med school, you can learn to type. I believe in you. Like he's like a hunt and peck type. One finger. Like in one finger. <laughs> like, oh my god, like if you just learned to type. Because filling out a form with like four lines of text takes 40 minutes. I'm like, this is, like, this is painful. Can I just like, type it for you while I'm sitting here waiting for you to fucking mail type it? <laughs> just learn to type. <laughs> anyway, I am going to do this side off camera because you can't see it. So I will be back. I'm back. Uh, I've finished the side and it's really nice because it's finally colder out so I'm not really sweating very much. It's very nice. I'm enjoying that. So I'm going to do the top before I do the very back. <clears throat> I say top but I mean front. What else was I going to talk about? I'm going to look. I keep a note file on my phone for things to talk about in videos, and then I ignore it most of the time. So, did I talk about hot sauce? <laughs> Why do I have hot sauce on my list? Um, I don't like hot sauce. I don't know what it is about the taste of hot sauce. There's just like a taste to it that I find absolutely revolting. And it was really disappointing because I heard a short one, one day. And I was like, oh, spicy shawarma. I'm excited. Let's get the extra hot stuff. And then it turned out to just be regular shawarma with hot sauce on it. Oh, it was so gross and it totally ruined my shawarma. Bleh, hot sauce. <laughs> yes, I had hot sauce on my phone. I was that angry about it at the time that I wrote it on my phone to complain about it in a video. <laughs> I have strong feelings about hot sauce. I've never tried hot sauce that I like. I know. A lot of people feel strongly about their hot sauce, but I find it gross. And there's something about it. And there's like, Bleh. and like, I like sour things. I like bitter things. I like vinegar. I like spicy things. Like, that actually have chilies in them, not just you know, just oil. Hot sauce is so gross. <laughs> I don't know how anybody can eat that shit. Yeah, like it's not the level of spice because you know I like spicy things, but ruin my freaking shawarma. <laughs> it's just like spread on the top of it. Like it was fairly spicy, and like spicy enough to make my mouth hurt, which was fine. That's what I was going for. Um, yeah, but bleh, bleh. like I like spicy things enough that. I'm making an attempt at growing jalapenos <laughs> inside because it's really hard to find. Like, yeah, I could go to the grocery store and get them fresh, but look at that, I don't go to the grocery store that would be my house. Um, 
and you can't find like pickled jalapenos here so I decided to try to grow my own jalapenos and then I could pickle them myself and have jalapeno goodness whenever I want because sometimes I want nachos and I'm not going to the fucking store to buy jalapenos and it's not like you could, they really freeze very well because I've got some kind of red chilies in the freezer which I tried to put on jalapenos once so but they were way too much like red Thai chilies I'm not gonna be here saying like oh yeah I'm eating the spiciest chilies but the red chilies are pretty spicy it's really good if you put them in a peanut sauce much better than fucking hot sauce <laughs> so yeah sometimes I want nachos and I want jalapenos on my nachos and that's not gonna happen unless I go to the store so I'm solving that problem myself if I can get them to grow right now they're just little seedlings so we shall see I don't have the best track record of growing things oh my god and I've got because first <laughs> I had a problem with spider mites, but like I've intermittently had this recurring problem with I thought they were aphids, but my friend who gardens is like, uh, aphids don't fly, you idiot. He didn't call me an idiot, but you know, it was there in his town. <laughs> so it turns out that aphids don't fly and they're gnats. So yeah, I've had a problem with those because they like lay eggs in the soil and they're impossible to get rid of. And like I can't use insecticides because Phil is an idiot and would get into them so I'm like they'll kind of die off if you really let the soil that dry out but then the plants die and so it's just <laughs> an ongoing issue that's never going to be solved and every so often I get an idea trying to solve it so I have this idea to put out apple cider vinegar to drown them because they're attracted to apple cider vinegar and then a few days later a week later i don't know how long later it's like fruit flies everywhere <laughs> and normally i do not get fruit flies because i keep everything in the fridge even stuff you're not supposed to keep in the fridge i keep everything in the fridge because at one point i lived in an apartment well two points and if I have like an apple out on the counter, it's a fruit flies. So I just got in the habit of never leaving anything produce wise out ever. So I'm like, why, why do I have these fruit flies? Like, I couldn't get rid of them. Like, I'd be drinking my wine and there would be a cloud of fruit flies around my face. It was horrible. And then, like, I don't know, a week later, after suffering through this, I finally clued in the apple cider vinegar. So my attempt to get rid of the gnats caused a fruit fly infestation that made my life hell. And it's still kind of making my life hell. There's, well, it's not making my life hell anymore. It's just annoying because there's still a couple around. It's like, <laughs> it took me so long to realize what it was. And then when I did, I'm like, God damn it. You try to do natural solutions to things. So you're not poisoning your freaking cat. And then fruit flies. And they are, well, they weren't that hard to get rid of. As soon as I got rid of the apple cider vinegar, they kind of slowly started dispersing because, again, I don't keep anything out. Like, even, I don't produce a lot of garbage in the first place, and I don't put anything fresh in the garbage, and I compost if I can, but I will, like, put my compost in the fridge. I'm not allowed to put my compost items in the fridge to let them dry out enough that they won't attract pests or smell. Um, it works if you, you know, if you find your compost is smelly, put it in the fridge. <laughs> I just leave it out on the counter to dry sometimes, but yeah, replies. At least the ant problem is over. <laughs> Every summer I have an ant problem, but it's fall now, so the ants have gone away. And now it's just the gnats, which I don't even know. I have a fucking favorite of gnats. I've looked it up on the internet several times, and there's just not really a good solution that's not pesticides. Because <clears throat> I did have an aphid problem this summer, and that's what killed my hydrangea and my basil and my cilantro. No, it didn't kill the basil, it killed the cilantro. 
and my violets. <laughs> I'm new to trying to garden inside and it's not working out super well for me in case you couldn't tell. But having talked to like anybody who has plants inside, they're like, oh yeah, I've got gnats. I'm like, okay, so it's not just me being terrible. It's not just me. Purple eyes, oh my god. I'm like, I can live with the gnats because they're slow. I can like grab them out of the air and have the satisfaction of crushing them. But yeah, fruit flies are fast. And if you're drinking wine, they're going to be like around your face. God, so cold. <laughs> like, take a sip of wine and then put a lid on it. Oh my god. It was bad. It was bad times, but it's over now. God, I went from. <laughs> I guess there was a logical progression. Um, hot sauce to jalapeno to fruit flies, you know, it's, it all makes sense. I might have destroyed my basil by over harvesting it, but we'll see. I just did it a couple days ago, because like everything on the stems, we'll see if it makes in. I might need to mix up more run out of 30 volume. Thankfully, finally, I've been trying to get rid of that for months. Now it's just 20 and 7. I don't even know if you can see this part. I could turn to try and make it easier, but then I can't see what I'm doing. It's probably more important for me to be able to see what I'm doing than for you to be able to see it. No offense. I don't really have a good plan for what I'm going to do next. I still have this hope in my heart that the Underground Cosmetics Blue is going to completely go away without any bleach. It's starting to seem kind of doubtful. But, I don't know, I haven't really washed it too many times. I don't wash my hair a lot. Usually I'm trying to preserve color, but then you get in the habit of not washing a lot, and then when you do want to strip color out, you don't, you know, I'm in the habit of washing a lot, so. Anyway, rumble, rumble, rumble. Unfortunately, hot sauce was the only thing on the list that I haven't talked about. I guess I could return to my Tears of the Kingdom playthrough. Right. What's happening here? Or I could start with Final Fantasy 1 and then play through 1 to 5 and then play 6 again. <laughs> I can't I can't stop with it. I don't know. I've never had a game that well like I guess the first time I played through Breath of the Wild. That's like all I could think about. And I've kind of been having a hankering to play like Ocarina of Time again. Majora's Mask. I've got video games lined up, I guess. There's many options. I'm starting to get hot now. I'm so glad it's fall. And my cold has mostly gone away. <laughs> Phlegm, like deep down in my chest, but that's the life of a smoker. What can you say? If I get sick, it just like sinks in there, thickens, and it's really gross. But I'm not coughing as much, so there we go. That's that. Also, I have this idea, this like brilliant, groundbreaking idea. How about? You know when you go to get your passport renewed, you need to like go elsewhere and bring a picture with you. What if they took the picture at the passport office so you don't waste your freaking time <laughs> and roll up at the desk and they're like, oh, well, you know, there's a bit of glare on your face, so it's a 50-50 chance that they'll accept it. And you're like, so like, what do I do if they don't accept it? Like, how will I be notified if they don't accept it? Like, it's like, well, they'll call you. Like, I get, like, 
I don't know, 10 spam calls a day. Like, which one do I know if, if it's the passport office? Like, will they leave a message? I don't know. Because um, I keep the ringer off on my phone because I work in a job where if I didn't keep the ringer off, I would be constantly disrupted. My call outs for shifts. Like, I keep it off at all times. Unless I'm expecting a call, but you know, I'm usually not. So, I don't know. I hopefully have not missed a call from the passport office. I was thinking today when I noticed I'd missed a call that I was like, oh shit, was it the passport office? I was like, oh wait, it's a Saturday. <laughs> it's a government agency there and calling me on the Saturday. So, but I missed a couple yesterday. Hopefully we're not that, but like if I just took the picture there, then the picture would be accepted, right? <laughs> and if I have freaking pale skin, like there's gonna be a flare. <laughs> I don't know. But I kind of was a little suspicious of the guy taking the picture because he just did like one picture. There's the last time I went, he's like, "Oh, there's a big flare on your forehead," and like put some makeup on my forehead. And, I went to the London drugs. I didn't give a shit this time, I guess. And I, <laughs> like, like, I don't like having pictures taken of me. Says the person who's doing enough to have a YouTube channel. Um, I just need to mix up a little bit more. Um, what was I talking about? So, I just like pull my glasses up and like take a picture and like, shows it to me and like, yeah, whatever is fine. And then I'm like, wait, because <laughs> I've got like the little flyaway hairs bending behind my ears that were sticking straight out. I'm like, can we try that again? Because that's uh, not that's not quite good enough. It's something I'm gonna have to look at for the next ten years. And I already wasn't happy in the first place because like the last time I had a passport picture taken, I weighed probably like sixty pounds less than I do now. So like. I liked that passport picture, and I'm a little more like, Bleh. Anyway, the struggle is real. Yeah, I was in a hurry to get out of there because I didn't want more pictures to get to They weren't good enough. Well, hopefully they were good enough because it's kind of the procrastinated way too long, and I need it for like November, and it's almost November. Um, so yeah, hopefully I should be able to pick it up on the 5th if they accept the picture. And hopefully I would have heard by now if they weren't accepting the picture. You can see a lot of the peachy color there. Meh. Okay, no, nope, don't want that touching. And this is the downside to doing the back last. Okay. I don't think I needed to mix up as much as I did. I may or may not cut out this side. I'm probably going to cut out this side. Okay. There's too much on my brush. Also, why does it cost more to pick up your passport than to have it mailed to you? I don't really get it, because surely it would cost less to them to have people pick it up, because they don't need to mail it, but... Well, it's an extra $20 to pick it up. <laughs> but if they mail it, it's an extra 10 days to wait. Well, up to 10 days. So... Why? Government agencies, man. I had to go downtown for that shit. <laughs> I don't want to go downtown. Never. The other passport office is like way off in the other end of the city, so I just suck it up. I don't know. What are we doing? Okay. Why? This is where you start at the bottom and work your way up. Okay, but why do I have more breakage here? I wonder. Oh, 
But once I have a new passport, then I won't have to worry about it for another time. But years. God, what am I going to look like then? <laughs> Maybe. Also, it's kind of sad to see my last passport go because. Well, I don't stamp it most of the time if you just go to the States. Sometimes you get the odd overzealous customs person who stamps it when you're going to the States, but most of the time they don't even bother. It's like. I don't even know how many times I went to the States for the drones tour for Muse, like at least four in 2016. There's like, I don't know, <laughs> four or five trips to the UK in there. There's Prague, there's Budapest, there's Armenia, there's Turkey. There's a good passport, man. <laughs> it took me to a lot of places. But I could start with a new one. Not that I really. I'm still not feeling confident about my ability to travel. But we shall see. Got one planned in November, and my parents are going to come and watch Phil. So I was thinking, like, my parents are going to come to my house, and then they're going to meet my brothers to watch all their pets so they can watch Phil because he's a fucking delicate little flower. Wouldn't do well at their house without me there. Well, it doesn't do well at their house with me there because there's too many other animals around. But, God, why is he such a little <laughs> drama queen? And somebody at work's like, Oh, can you watch my cat for me? And I'm like, I cannot. Like, I'm sorry. But I think that's the last time I watched her cat contributed to one of Phil's urinary blockages. And I no, I can't do it again. Can't do it again. Too stressful for me and for him because he's a little asshole about being around other cats. He's fucking terrible. I, I've never had a cat this bad about other cats. Like, Howie was just the little golden angel and like, would accept another cat. He wasn't happy about another cat in his face, but he just chill. Like, Phil's gonna freak the fuck out and try to kill them and start screaming and, yeah. You know, so, parents are going to come watch him. Precious little flower. To be fair, they did just spend a week babysitting their other grandchildren who are actually children and not cats. <laughs> but I just had the vet come to my house for a little home visit. To... Only because Phil's on medication. And it's been so long since the vet came to see him that they wouldn't refill any more of his meds until he had like a visit so that's why I had it done he's fine um and it's so nice he's spending the extra $35 to have a vet come to my house because he gets so stressed if I take him to the vet and the last time I took him in I could hear him like screaming in the back room and I'm like, oh fuck, that's Phil, I know it. I was sitting in the waiting room and they're like, yeah, you should probably sedate him before the next time you bring him in. I'm like, oh, okay, like the poor boy. So yeah, having him back come to my house, um, I even waited outside so he didn't ring the doorbell because Phil gets scared of the doorbell. Like, like I said, he's fucking high strung. Um, yeah, it was so much less stress for him. I just locked him up in my spare room and then he had his little exam and his vaccinations in the bathroom. Like, <laughs> I've said like four or five times how chubby he is. I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. He's got a little punch. And he's a little bit rotund, and it makes him softer <laughs> and cuddlier. But yeah, I really should decrease his food portions. Um, it's like, oh, you know, it's odd for a cat that's been fed raw food to be this chubby. <laughs> like, but I'm all like, I'm not feeding people food. Like, I don't know. If I, are you expecting me to confess to something? Like, he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't eat people food. He just eats his raw food. 
and two treats a day because I disguise his treat in one treat and then, I mean, his pill in one treat and then give him one treat after he's had the pill and, you know, I'm a good. <laughs> yeah, I guess I need to revisit that. Well, revisit the food portions. I'm going to continue with this little treat regime for pills because if you can find an easy way to give your cat a pill, that's what you do. You don't change that. <clears throat> If you're interested, what I do yeah, is, well, he doesn't like the pill pocket treats, so I just take like a tiny fragment of a pill pocket and wrap it around his pill and then kind of squish that and then break temptations in half. And I sort of squish it all into the middle of the temptations and squish it together so most of the surface area is temptations instead of pill pocket. And he just gobbles it up. <laughs> like, and then he gets a reward treat at the end. At one point, he would take the treats if I just had a soft pocket kind of and rolled it in nutritional yeast or 40 flora. But then he caught on to that trick, so he had refused to eat that. So we're back to the temptations, which is a little bit more work, but whatever. Again, if you can find an easy way for your cat to take a pill, like, you, you roll with it. So yeah, otherwise he's got to clean both house besides needing a dental cleaning, which is going to be unfortunate on my pocketbook. But whatever. He's about due for it. He's eight, so like middle age for a cat, which is sad, <laughs> stressful. Me and Phil, both middle aged. So I don't know when I'm going to book that. I should probably do it sooner than later, but I don't think I've got it in me to do it this month. We shall see. Figure it out. We just always figure it out. Anyway, now I can get his meds refilled, hopefully for another two years, because the vet let me get away with two years of refills. He had been seen by a vet in the meantime during a urinary blockage, but not as a regular vet. And luckily this vet supports me feeding him raw food because the vet's really opposed to that. Okay, I'm going to go through and cross-check everything and we'll leave this on for whatever amount of time I leave it on for. And then I'll be back tomorrow. Yay, it turned out so well. I might have overcooked it a little bit because it's so light that I don't really need to tone it, but I probably will. I haven't decided what to do next, but yeah, it turned out super well. Um, haven't noticed any spots. No more breakage than usual. I guess it's a little bit yellow back there. Could use a tone there, but yes worked out for me. One of my better bitches, I must say. Anyway, that's that. Now I need to figure my shit out and decide what to do next.